But if I told you, you can make these colored splines no matter how much experience you have in woodworking. Hard to believe? Stick around and I'll show you. So last year for the Builders Challenge, I did this cool looking mid-century modern console table with a bunch of colored details in it. Uh, one of them was this nice looking um, curve bending with colored splines in it. And I got a ton of questions about how on earth I put those colored splines in and how I made them fit uh, this snug. And I made a promise last year that I would uh, show you guys how to do it. So let's go, let's dive right in. I have three ways to uh, make them, but I'll show you on the whiteboard so I can uh, draw out some lines for you guys and show you what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it. Before we go in the theory of cutting these splines, let me quickly go over the, the concept of curve bending. It's basically a technique where you make several uh, perpendicular cuts to your workpiece. Uh, in fact, really deep, uh, so you get a really thin layer on top. Uh, which makes it able to bend your wood, uh, plywood, hardwoods, whatever. Um, one thing you have to make uh, sure of, your, one thing you have to look out for is to make sure your uh, grain direction of the top layer is perpendicular to your cuts uh, because otherwise the, um, the thickness of the veneer, the final thickness of the final layer of your uh, workpiece will be too thin and it will crack. Uh, so that's a, a good tip for you right off the bat. For your plywood, if you have a birch plywood, you can cut up all the way to the very last layer of your piece of veneer uh, without any hiccups. Oh, and before I forget, I made a little jig for this. Um, it's basically a piece of wood with a uh, cut in it. I've made a, a key. It's basically a spline. That's the thickness, the same thickness as your blade. Then I moved the jig over Again, the same thickness as the blade. So what I have now is uh, when I start cutting, all my cuts will be at the same distance and this will make for a really fluid uh, curve. If you can get it to a point where it's flexible like this on its own, you know you're on a good way. Uh, if it's not, you can just go over every curve again and just cut it a hair deeper, but take it slowly, take your time, uh, you'll be all right in the end. On to um, measuring our splines or on to making our splines. Um, we're gonna have to do some uh, measuring. Um, first thing we need is the depth of one of these cuts because that will be the height of our um, well colored spline. So for me that's 17 millimeters. 17 millimeters, I don't know if you can see that. 70 milli millimeters high. So the top of every spline will be uh, from the bottom to the very point will have to be 17 millimeters. And then at the base, um, that should be three millimeters because I know my table saw blade is three millimeters. We're gonna need two millimeters. <laughs> Knowing this, we're gonna be needing these small little splines that are 70 millimeters in height. And on the top or the bottom part, depending on how you look at it, this has to be two millimeters. So that's fairly small. Uh, so we have to be careful uh, how we go about it on cutting them. Um, the first thing you, you can do is you take your stock that you know is uh, the minimum height. This can be more if you like, it's, it's not that big of a deal, but you're gonna be cutting off a really thin slice. Uh, two millimeters in our case, or look at the size of your blade or the thickness of your blade, uh, and you can uh, switch it around based on that. Um, you're gonna be cutting off a really thin piece. And then there's three ways. You can either line, uh, you can either mark everything out. So we know that we're gonna need a piece 
that's 70 millimeters high and two millimeters thick. So if you mark out one millimeter on each, each side, um, then you'll be able to draw out these lines. You can here sand this, sand this down. If the pieces are not too big, the second way you can do is, <clears throat> if, if I make this larger, then what you can do is you can make a first cut along the first edge and then if you flip the piece around, you can do this on the table saw if you want, if you dare. Um, like this. If you flip the piece around after you've cut off this part, then you can make the second part like this on your table saw. Make sure your uh, blade is cutting along this part and then what you'll have left is this really small and thin spline that's exactly the size you need. Final way is to make a, a Kumiko jig effect where you take a big block um, where you can put in your little piece that you've cut off like this and then when you cut the jig off first part of the jig like this then you can chisel this away um, and then on the other side of the jig you can line it up because if you put in the spline that you've just cut on the first part up, it's gonna be tilted just a hair like this and then you'll have to um, adjust for the angle it's gonna be slightly deeper a double in fact because this will be in on its side but I'll show you it makes it, it will make more sense this technique is really simple. You just take your splines that you've just cut and that you've tested inside the curves you've made uh, in the piece that you're going to be bending. Um, you take your sander and you start sanding. Uh, you take light passes on each side so you can flip the piece around and you work your way up to the center uh, part of the, of the spline. So you mark out the height you need, in our case 70 millimeters, you mark out uh, the midpoint and then you just start sanding. What I'll do is I'll take my old and trustworthy sander um, and I'll work my way up to the line uh, until I come to a point where it's just about right and then I'll do the final touches on a piece of sandpaper, checking it from time to time to see how it's going and then once it's good to go, like this one, you can just pop it in and see how it fits. And in our case, that looks just perfect. So on to the next one. The second technique I'll be doing on the table saw and for that I'm going to be using this uh, fine finish uh, saw blade uh, which lets me cut into plywood without any tear outs or at least minimize the tear out as much as I can. Um, if you're looking for a really good blade to cut plywood I would highly suggest this one. I've had some great success with this and uh, it's a really thin blade as well. It's only I think 1.7 millimeters thick so if you want to uh, minimize uh, loss of your material and minimize the amount of dust you're creating on the table saw this is a must-have in my opinion so let's get installing this guy and then we'll be uh, tilting it five degrees so we can get those uh, two points exactly as we want to we'll start by making one cut so we have a an angled uh, piece on our uh, workpiece that we'll be using for our splines uh, and then once we've one angled side, we can set up our thin strip jig so we can get repetitive cuts over and over again 
uh, with the exact size that we'll need for our curve bending. I've set up my tin strip jig uh, against my angled side and I'm gonna do a first cut to see if it's too thick or too thin and then we go from there. If it's too thick then uh, that means I have to um, unscrew the screw and move it to uh, closer to my blade. If it's too thin that means I'll have to move it the other way. But we'll see how it goes. <laughs> that's way too thin but that's okay um, we'll do a second third or four uh, test if we need and uh, so in this case we're gonna move it over uh, to the left that's more like it I'll come a little closer to show you guys I've got a and a really thin point on top and so that's exactly what we need and I know for sure that the depth is long enough because I'm seeing uh, pretty much all my colors except red and I know there's gonna I'm gonna have to cut off uh, a little piece so I can get to 17 millimeters really easy there we go really thin slice on top and enough to cut off until I get to the 17 millimeters mark so this is going to be really, really handy. For the third method, I'll be using this jig and it's basically uh, a Kumiko jig. So I had a square block on every side and uh, I've put some walls uh, next to it. So I know everything would fit in snug. There you go. And this is the almost the exact height of my splines and then what I did is I took off a little corner as you see at the back here so I can go uh, cut the angle on one side and once this side is done I can flip the piece around and I'll if I started it this way then I'll flip it around and do the other side this way I have a really small triangle that is uh, the same on both sides top and bottom a really sharp chisel is going to be extra handy for this i'll start by chopping off red if i take my jig and put it in the first side i can run over And there we go perfect start now let's start putting on the first chamfer on this side and then we'll flip it around and do the other to make it a little easier on myself i'll be clamping this down so it can go anywhere and there you go one perfectly shaped spline to go into our curve bending Let's start with the fun part. So I have my part ready that's uh, that has the curves in it, and I have my all my splines ready. I've uh, I did to be honest, I did most of this with the table saw because once you get going, um, once you've set up your jig correctly, your tin strip jig, and uh, the angle on your blade, this goes really really fast. Um, it took me about. 10 to 15 minutes to set everything up uh, er, just right but once it was on point i think i did all of these uh, or most of most of these in like uh, three minutes or something so it's really uh, really fast only thing left to do after cutting them on the table saw is a little sanding here and there to get uh, rid of the small tear out you get but apart from that it's good to go before I glue everything up, I'm gonna quickly do a um, quick dry run just to see if everything fits uh, to make sure there's not too much tension on it while I bend it. And apart from that, if everything goes well, it's good to go. And then after some drying, we'll finish this baby up. 
Maybe another tip before I start bending this guy. Um, you can see on the back I've added a little piece of tape. Uh, this is for two reasons. It will prevent me from bending it too far or putting too much too much pressure on it and this way cracking the whole thing. And the other is to um, avoid uh, fibers pulling up while I bend it. So that's why there's a little piece of tape. It's a, it's a really good tip if you're bending large pieces. Uh, the wider you go with your curve bending, the harder it'll get. So every piece of help uh, is very welcome. So without further ado, let's try and bend it. There we go. Dry fit. All ready to go. Let's go, let's glue this up and then we'll finish it. And there we go. As promised last year, I finally got to making this video. I hope you liked it. I, I hope you learned something. Uh, but before you go, I would like to give a few tips and tricks uh, if you want to do this for yourself. Uh, depending on the method you'll be going for, um, one thing you have to always do is take your time it's really important that you start your splines, the thickness of your splines, uh, that you start off with them uh, correctly. <coughs> Otherwise, you'll have problems along the way and you'll be uh, breaking uh, your pieces and having all kinds of tr uh, trouble and you don't want that, uh, especially when you get to the point uh, gluing up. Um, and that's the second tip. Do always do a dry run always push it into the final position before you start gluing up. The worst thing that can happen is have everything to the exact thickness glued up and then cracking the whole thing. You'll probably cry or something like that. I know I would. <clears throat> the third tip is the, the tape on the back. The, it really prevents you from putting too much, too much pressure on your piece. And it also supports the fibers of the wood. Uh, it prevents it from popping out. Apart from that, it's really patience. Take your time, uh, love what you do. And if you're having a bad day, put it aside for a few hours and then come back to it. Uh, even if it cracks on you, don't worry. It can happen to the best of us. It happened on me multiple times last year, but even for shooting this video, I was just rushing, rushing, rushing it. And that's not the way you do a project like this. You got to have a little patience for beautiful things like these. So apart from that, if you do have any questions, uh, please let me know down below or hit me up on Instagram. I'm posting there all the time. Feel free to ask me anything about this or any other of my projects. And if you would like to see me making something uh, different, something colorful, let me know as well. Maybe uh, we can uh, work something out. Uh, to get you started on something I'm making for yourself. But that's it for today. See you next time and don't forget to make something colorful. Bye bye.